So good evening, everyone. It's so nice to see so many people here tonight. It's been a long time since we were able to meet together in public. So welcome. Um, I will do my superintendent's presentation following the special education IEP process for families. But I am very excited to introduce Nathan Yakubov. He is our um, administrator for special education for District 25. I am happy to let our community know that he will be a resource for everyone in our district office. You will be able to email him and communicate with him. Um, and I am so excited that our office has been given this position and Nathan is knowledge knowledgeable and skilled in this world. So I would like to welcome him this evening. Welcome Nathan. Good evening, everyone. So I'll be spending a few minutes speaking about special education um, and the IEP process for families. So um, as stated, my name is Nathan Yakubov. I'm the administrator for special education for District 25. Uh, my contact information is on the slide, and uh, you can feel free to reach out to me with any questions or concerns you have regarding special education evaluations, uh, services, placement, and assistive technology. Okay. As you can see from the visual representing District 25 and our students, at District 25, we strive to empower learners, embrace differences, and provide equitable access and opportunity for all. For some students, that's going to require having an individualized education program, an IEP, to be able to access the curriculum and the supports um, with individualized support. So what is an IEP? <clears throat> an IEP is a legal document and it stands for an individualized education program. All students with disabilities who require special education services have an IEP. The IEP contains information about your child's interests, their strengths, their needs, their goals, and the educational program that's being recommended for them. It's a legal document that describes how the Department of Education will provide your child a free and appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment. And we'll talk about that a little bit um, further on. So let's first discuss the process for students that are in 3K and pre-K. So we're talking about any child that's between ages three to five years old um, and not yet in kindergarten. Uh, preschool special education services can support children ages three to five with disabilities or delays in development. Uh, the services are provided free of charge to families and these services can help support your child's learning, speech and language, physical development, social emotional skills and other areas. The Committee on Preschool Special Education is the one that manages the process for the preschool children. There are 10 offices citywide. Um, I'll share the contact information for our office, for our district, um, in a minute when we go to the next slide. So in order to start the process for an evaluation for your child who's in pre-K or pre-K, if you're concerned about your child's development, the first thing you would do is write a letter to your CPSE. And that letter um, is called a referral and must have, be made in writing. And in that letter, you're going to put down that you're requesting a referral, an evaluation for your child. You'll provide your child's full legal name and date of birth. Describe any areas that you're concerned with your child's development. List any services your child may have received already in the past. And provide your full contact information, including your name, your address, telephone number. And if English is not your first or preferred language, indicate that as well. After the referral is made, you'll receive a packet from the CPS off, CPSE office, which will include a notice that they received your letter, a list of evaluation sites that can evaluate your child, a consent form for an evaluation, and information about your rights as a parent, and a medical form. Once you receive the packet, you should choose a site from the list that you'll receive and set up an appointment. If your child speaks a language other than English, make sure that you choose a site that can evaluate them in that language. At your first appointment with the, with the social worker, you're going to be asked to provide consent for the evaluation. Um, this is informed written consent that you are allowing your child to be evaluated. 
If you choose not to consent in writing to the evaluation, your child will not be evaluated. When we talk about evaluating your child for the first time, um, there's a number of evaluations that they will be doing. Um, they'll start with a psychological evaluation, which will test your child's cognitive skills. A social history interview, which gets background from you about your child's development and your family history. A physical evaluation form, which is from your doctor. And an observation of your child in their setting, in their natural setting. Um, any other assessments or evaluations that you feel would be necessary, uh, or that the team would feel is necessary, they may request that as well. So after the evaluations are complete, you see in the third column, you're going to be called to an IEP meeting. Um, the CPSC meeting will be held, and at that meeting, they're going to review the evaluation results with you. They'll share and learn more about your child, and you'll share more information about your child with the team. They'll determine if your child is eligible for preschool special education services, and after the meeting, if your child is eligible for services, the CPSC will arrange for those services to be provided free of cost to you. Once again, services cannot begin unless you consent that you are giving permission for those services to begin. So as I mentioned before, this is the contact information for CPSC 3, which covers districts 25, 26, 28, and 29. I obviously work with district 25, District 25, but they cover four districts. Um, and all the contact information is over there on this slide. Now, the process for school age children, we're talking children ages 5 to 21 years old, um, is similar to what we just spoke about with some differences. Uh, the first difference is that although you still have to put your request in writing, you will be submitting it to the school this time, to your child's actual school the principal at the school, or another staff member at the school. Once again, the referral has to be in writing, and it's gonna describe what your concerns are about your child, with their learning, their development, their behavior. Um, you're gonna be requesting a special education evaluation, list any services that your child has received prior, make sure you're including your child's full legal name and date of birth, and your information as well, your name, address, and telephone number. And once again, if your first language is not English or preferred, You'll mention that as well. After we receive your letter and the case is open in our system, um, you will receive a notice of referral letter. And that is that letter will be asking you to come and meet with the social worker for an interview. If your child never received special education services before, you'll be asked to give consent that you're giving permission, and once again, to have your child be evaluated for services. Even if you're the one who requested the evaluation, you need to provide consent for the evaluation in order, in order for the evaluation to begin. After you give consent, um, the Department of Education will have 60 calendar days to evaluate your child. And the evaluation will be done in all areas related to the disability, to the areas of concern. Uh, once again, like we mentioned, there'll be the interview, there'll be what we call a psychoeducational evaluation, where they'll be looking at your child's cognitive skills, There'll be a medical uh, form, the physical examination from your doctor. And again, there's going to be an observation of your student, of your child in their set. Some other assessments that might be needed for your specific child. Um, they may need a speech and language assessment. They, need, they need, may need an occupational or physical therapy evaluation or a behavior assessment. We'll also be looking at the teacher's assessments, the teacher's reports any reports from, from previous um, years as well. And your child may need to be evaluated for assistive technology, which we'll speak about a little bit later. You can also provide your evaluation team with outside evaluations. Those will be considered um, by the team that will review those as well. Any evaluations that the Department of Education does for you will be done free of, free of charge. If your home language is not English, your child should be assessed in their language as well, in their home language. So that's what we call a bilingual evaluation, and that will be done with the home language along with English as well. After the evaluations are complete, we've got it to the final stage, and that's the IEP meeting. Again, you'll be invited to this meeting after the evaluations are completed. At the meeting, the IEP team, which you are a member of as a parent, 
We will review the information from the evaluations and any other sources that you provide. And the team will decide if your child is eligible for special education services. <clears throat> before you get to the meeting, before the IEP meeting, as a parent, you should gather any information you can about your child that you can share with the team. Be prepared to discuss your child, their strengths, their needs, how that affects their learning in school and at home. Review the evaluations that were conducted. Prepare any questions that you might have before the meeting and come to the meeting with those questions. Provide the team with any evaluations that you've done on the outside privately. Provide that before your meeting as well. And you have the right to invite anybody that you feel may be supportive to you or helpful at the meeting. Just notify the team in advance that you would like this person to participate at the meeting with you as well. You can also request a parent member to be at your meeting with you. A parent member is a member of the community that has a child with a disability. And they can come to the meeting to support you with any questions you have as well at the meeting. If you would like a parent member to be at the meeting, just make that request at least 72 hours before the meeting. Now, in order to be eligible for special education services, students have to meet one of the 13 disability classifications as defined by the New York State Education Department's regulations. <clears throat> um, like I said, there's 13 of them. We could just mention a few of them over here. Um, one is uh, deafness, a, a child with hearing impairment um, who's unable to hear most sounds, even with a hearing aid. A child with an emotional disturbance is another category. Um, a child has a learning disability, so it's affecting their ability to learn. Um, it might affect their ability to read, to write, to listen, to speak. Um, a child may have multiple disabilities. And that's to be in different areas together for one student. A child might have a speech or language impairment that's affecting their ability to understand language or to use language. So those are just a few of the 13 disability classifications, but your child would have to meet one of those in order to be eligible for services. Just a note on that, not meeting standards or grade standards is not automatically a classification or eligibility. We need to fall under one of the 13 eligibility classifications where the disability is affecting your child's ability to participate and to learn. The IEP, as we mentioned, is a written statement of the plan that we provide with you to provide your child with a free and appropriate public education in their least restrictive environment. And what that means is that your child will be in a school and in the classroom with non-disabled peers as much of the day as appropriate for your child. So in order to do that, we make a recommendation of where your child will receive their services. And basically in this slide, you can see the different options that are available to support your child in the least restricted environment. The first one we have there is general education. That's a child who doesn't receive any IEP services, no special education services. He's in just the regular general education classroom. If a child needs more support, they may be recommended for related services. That means they'll be in a regular general education classroom and they'll just be working with a therapist, perhaps a speech therapist or an occupational therapist to address specific areas of need. Your child may need general education with special education teacher support services or otherwise known as SETS. That's where a special education teacher is working either one-on-one -on -one with your child or in a small group in order to support their learning of the curriculum in their classroom. Integrated co-teaching services is a model where we have two teachers, one special education teacher and one general education teacher. And your child is in a class with special education students and general education students together and getting the support that they need as long as, as well as the models of appropriate um, development in the classroom with them. District 75 specialized programs, <clears throat> those are um, a more restrictive setting where everyone in the, in, the, um, in the school will be a student with an IEP and will, will be receiving some sort of special education program. Um, I skipped one, we also have special class services and that is in a community school and your child would be recommended to be in a small class where everyone in that class is a child with an IEP and the child has one special education teacher as well as some other adult support in the classroom to work with the children. Then we have the most restrictive settings. Those are day and residential placement, 
or home and hospital instruction. And those are for students who cannot participate in a community school or in one of our District 75 schools because the level of support that they need is much greater. So um, they need more of a full-time program, um, either a day program or a residential program where they're actually staying there overnight. And then you have home and hospital instruction where either for medical reasons or otherwise the student can't be um, um, present in school. So they would be receiving instruction at home or in the hospital. So what you'll see in this slide also is that there's an arrow going up and down on the side of these programs. And the reason for that is because these are not meant to be like in a ladder or in an order for specific students. Um, at any given time, any students can be within any of these settings, depending on their need. And just because a student may start in one setting doesn't mean that they're going to stay there. Or if they need you know, more support or less support, we will be reviewing that, your team, your school, and your child can be moved in and around these different types of programs. And they can be flexible as well. It doesn't have to be for the entire school day. We can have a combination of different services, different settings as well. Within all of these programs, your child may be recommended as well for a bilingual component um, for part of the day or for the full day of instruction as well. There are times um, that your child's IEP will need to be reviewed. These are, there are annual, annual, annual reviews that are conducted at least once a year and a reevaluation which occurs once every three years. In both situations, the team is reviewing the IEP recommendation. And for a reevaluation, there may actually be new assessments conducted as well. You or the school can request a review earlier as well if there are any concerns. Um, you would put that request in writing to the school or to the team. Um, but the reevaluation should not take place more than one time a year unless you and the Department of Education agree in writing. Another, another service that might be recommended as part of your IEP is assistive technology. Assistive technology can help students communicate with teachers and classmates, do their schoolwork, and participate in school programs and activities. Um, AT tools are commonly described as low-tech, mid-tech, or high-tech. And an evaluation will determine the type of tool best able to support your child in school. And the device can be something as simple as a laptop, as you see over there. Um, to support your child, or something as you see in the right hand corner, a little bit more involved, that's a communication device where the student would actually be clicking on a picture or a word in order to elicit sound to help them communicate. If you'd like to request an evaluation for assistive technology, you will need to put that in writing uh, with the date, your child's name, date of birth, school, and ID number a description of why you think they need assistive technology, your name and your signature, your child will be evaluated at school, or at home, or at a department location, depending on the need of your child. Your child, your teachers, and you, if needed, will be trained to use the equipment that is recommended. Goals will be developed specifically for the device and how that will be used throughout the school day. Sometimes the evaluation will recommend a trial period for your child, to use the device and see how they perform with that. And then there'll be another review to determine if they actually will benefit from the device. After we receive um, your request, you'll be contacted for consent. Once again, you need to give consent that you are allowing your child to be evaluated for this type of evaluation. And then the department would have 60 calendar days to evaluate your child um, to know if they need that. We do provide translation and interpretation services over the phone and in person, as well as translation of documents, including evaluations and assessments, and sign language interpretation as well. If you need any of these services, speak with your IEP team. If you'd like an, an interpreter at your child's IEP meeting, or if you'd like any of the documents that you receive to be translated. Some students might not need an IEP um, to receive uh, supports throughout the school day. 
Um, for those students, we would offer them a 504 accommodations plan. And 504 accommodations is refers to Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. It requires schools to offer accommodations for students with disabilities. These accommodations can help students with health needs to participate in DOE programs and activities on an equal basis with their peers who don't have disabilities. Your child might be eligible for these health services or other types of accommodations um, if they have a physical or mental impairment and the impairment limits at least one major life activity. Some example for that might be if your child, for example, breaks a leg. That would be a physical impairment. Um, something more long term, maybe if your child has asthma that affects their ability to participate in activities. And if it affects any of their life activities, for example, communicating, breathing, doing things with their hands, lifting, learning, all of those would be considered that perhaps your child will need an accommodation. Your child's doctor would complete the form, the request form, and the doctor may suggest that the school provide certain accommodations. The team, the 504 team, will review the request with the doctor and, and the suggested accommodations, and if appropriate, let you know how they'll be provided at school. Some examples of accommodations that can be provided are classroom accommodations, for example, where your child sits in the classroom. They may need a certain type of seating in the classroom. Um, testing accommodations, they may need accommodations, for example, more time on a test or being in a separate room for a test. A paraprofessional, your child may need an adult to support them throughout the day due to their medical condition. Or your child may need some kind of accommodation for transportation on the bus. You have the right to challenge school decisions made regarding your child. You can request mediation or an impartial hearing. Both of those requests would be made in writing and you have the email addresses on the bottom of the slide where you can send those in. Alternatively, you can submit it to the school as well, um, if that's easier for you. Uh, mediation and impartial hearing, a slight difference for mediation, a, a mediator will help you and the school work out disagreements, that's a third party. We'll try to sit with you and the school to see if there's anything that we can work out in order to accommodate the needs of your child. An impartial hearing, is where an impartial hearing officer that's assigned listens to both sides of the disagreement and decides what, if anything, went wrong and how to fix that. Um, again, both requests should be made in writing uh, with your child's full name and address, ID number, birth date, and school, and of course your contact information. And very importantly, it should also include what solution you're looking to get from the mediation or impartial hearing. So you would write down what your concern is and what you would like to see resolved. So we spoke a lot, we spoke about a lot of information today. I know it's a lot <laughs> because it's very involved special education. Um, but over here you have some websites where you can learn more about everything that we spoke about in the past few minutes. We have the New York City Department of Education, the school's website, schools.nyc.gov. You can look into the state education department as well, nyse.gov. And of course, our community school district 25 uh, will have access to this presentation, as well as uh, a lot of other information and context as well. Um, so you can go ahead and look at that. And of course, our contact information is there, phone or text messages, email, and we can provide assistance in Spanish and Chinese as needed. Um, put that up if there's any questions. <laughs>